Have you ever been prescribed steroids like prednisone, medrol, methylprednisolone, dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, and wondered what is the difference between all of these medications? Why would a doctor choose one over the other? And what if you can't take steroids because of a health concern like diabetes? What else can you try? Today I'll answer those questions. Why there are different steroids, how doctors choose which one to use, and alternatives if these aren't good for you. I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. I'm a board certified doctor of pharmacy and third generation pharmacist. And steroids are powerful medications that help with inflammation, autoimmune diseases, asthma, arthritis, and saved my life. But not all steroids are the same. Prednisone, methylprednisolone, dexamethasone, I've personally been prescribed all of them. And each one has its own role depending on the severity, type of reason you're taking it, and your patient needs, your personal health situation before. So the first question I got from a person asked, why'd they give me a Medrol dose pack for COVID pneumonia instead of dexamethasone? Then later I was switched to prednisone. What's the difference between all these steroids? So all of these medications are in the same drug class. They're all glucocorticoids, steroids, corticosteroids. They're all related to each other. They're all mimicking a hormone in your body called cortisol. And they work in the exact same way to reduce inflammation and calm down an overactive immune system. They're used in situations where inflammation is causing damage like pneumonia, asthma, or autoimmune diseases. The key difference between all these steroids is really how strong they are and how long they last. So prednisone is the most common steroid. It lasts about a day. You take it first thing in the morning and it lasts until you go to bed at night. It's just right for mimicking the cortisol like I mentioned earlier. And that's why it's prescribed so often. Medrol or methylprednisolone, it's slightly stronger or more potent than prednisone. It's available as an oral dose pack or as solumedrol, an injectable version. The dose pack starts high and tapers down over days. So a total of six days of treatment, six pills the first day down to one pill on the last day. And this is helpful for short-term conditions. Most people don't continue taking this type of medication long-term. It's just not as well used. And when I say stronger, it's really methylprednisolone four milligram tablets, which is what these are, is the equivalent of prednisone five milligram tablets. So it's really only 20% strong, like more potent than prednisone. Now dexamethasone is a lot more potent and lasts a lot longer. It can last up to 72 hours. It's often used in severe inflammatory conditions or when fewer doses are preferred. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, dexamethasone became the first and only drug at the time proven to save lives in the ICU who had low oxygen levels because of its long lasting effects. Then there's hydrocortisone and it is much shorter acting and less potent than all of these. So it's great if you need to take something multiple times a day, if you're tapering off and it's often prescribed for people with adrenal insufficiency. So for the person who was prescribed medrol, prednisone, not dexamethasone, this is just often a lot easier to prescribe. It's just a little pack. Here you go. Take it and you're done. The dexamethasone is usually reserved for hospitalized patients with COVID at least. I personally had to take dexamethasone, 10 of the highest strength pills per day for three days. It was like a nuclear bomb to turn off my autoimmune situation. It didn't work, but it was reserved for a severe situation. And it's just a lot easier to prescribe prednisone. The doses are a lot easier to change. There's lots of options, pill strengths that doctors can prescribe. So all of these steroids work similarly, but they're just a little bit different as far as how potent they are. And every person reacts a little differently to each of them. Some people find that one will make them cranky, one will give them high blood sugar, and it's really just a trial and error thing for each person to do. So the next question that's really related came from a prednisone warrior's wife. She said, my husband, who's a type one diabetic, was given an injection of solumedrol for a bronchitis. It worked great, but it only lasted 24 hours. What alternatives are there to steroids like solumedrol or prednisone? 
So he's got diabetes. The other name for these drugs are glucocorticoids. They're named for the effect that the drug has on glucose. Diabetes is the problem with glucose so and insulin. So we've got to balance the benefit of the drug with the risks for this specific patient if you've got diabetes. So solumedrol, I mentioned earlier, was the liquid injectable version of methylprednisolone. So what alternatives to steroids, whether it's medrol, prednisone, or whatever, could be used? The tricky thing is that prednisone can be prescribed for almost any form of inflammation, whether it's in the eyes, the brain, the skin, the joints, the heart, the lungs, any doctor can prescribe it except for psychiatrists, dentists, foot doctors, all of them can prescribe it. So the alternative to prednisone is going to be different depending on what you are taking it for. And I've actually made a whole playlist of alternatives to prednisone for fill in the blank diagnosis. So you can check that out, click here, but I'll just quickly go through the alternatives to prednisone in general. So first are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Their class name is, we are not steroids. We do not cause all the side effects of these drugs. The NSAIDs is the acronym include ibuprofen, naproxen, meloxicam, celecoxib, all of these common medications, most of which are over the counter, but some are prescription only. And they are really helpful for inflammatory pain. So if you're having pain, then they might help. If you're worried about pills, there's other ways of getting steroids. You can have a cream for rashes. You can have a nasal spray for allergies. You can have eye drops for eye inflammation. You can use an inhaler for asthma. You can use a shampoo for people with scalp issues. There are other ways of getting a steroid across to the site of action because they act directly on where it's needed. It's often safer, it comes with less side effects because it's not going to your whole system. Then there's biologics that are getting even more amazing and complex and expensive as time goes on. Some fantastic ones include Dupixent that can be helpful for sinus issues or asthma or eczema. Humira, which can be helpful for many conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's other medications that are called steroid sparing, or they can be called disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, but they're essentially other oral pills that are usually older medications that can lower the inflammation in different ways to help a person not have to take as much prednisone. Often they're given along with the prednisone with the hopes that over time we can use less and less of this by having this one kick in. These include things like methotrexate, azathioprine, hydroxychloroquine, and there's a whole bunch of them depending on your disease. And finally, if a person absolutely needs a steroid like prednisone, but there's also the concern for diabetes, there are ways to deal with that type of a side effect. Monitoring blood glucose, getting on appropriate diabetes medications, replenishing the nutrients that can be affected like chromium picolinate that leads to when a person takes prednisone, there's a loss of chromium. And so replenishing that can help support stable blood sugars. So these steroids, whether it's medrol, prednisone, dexamethasone, or hydrocortisone, they're not a one size fits all. You gotta try to find which one is best for you. And it depends on your condition, the severity, how long it's going to last, and your individual health needs. So if you want other tips of how to manage side effects, because it's not just diabetes, you need to download my prednisone checklist. It includes the top seven mistakes that people make and how to avoid them. It also has 25 ways to cope with side effects. And it's all evidence-based and it's free. Just click the link below to download it now. And if you found this video helpful, you need to watch this next video and it's seven or more things to avoid while taking prednisone. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.